I, I want to go tonight to uh, 1 Samuel. No, put it on the screens everywhere. But if you're following along in your, your Bible, chapter 30. And I'll, I'll tell you, this is a word that has been stirring in my heart ever since last night. I went to bed with this word. I slept with this word. I'm intimate with this word right here. This word is going to take people from where they are right now to recover everything that the enemy has stolen from you. And some of you have lost things, you know, some of you lost your health, your job, your finances. And so you've got situations that's going on in your life, but when we're done tonight, you're gonna recover it all. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm gonna recover it all, recover it all, recover it all. So let's get familiar with the text. In, in chapter 30, it says, Now, it happened when David and his men came up at Ziklag. That's a cool city. On the third day, the Amalekites had invaded from the south of Ziklag and burned it with fire, and it was taken captive. They took captive all the women and all the children, everything great, but they didn't kill anyone. Everybody shout, they didn't kill anyone. But they carried away all them, and they went away. So David and his men came to the city and they had burned it with fire. But their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the, uh, the people were, were greatly distressed. And they lifted up their voice and they wept until they had no power left in them. They were absolutely exhausted. And then the Bible says David was greatly distressed. Anybody ever had been greatly distressed? It said David was greatly distressed. Everybody shout it with me. Greatly distressed. Greatly distressed. Come on, all campuses, shout it. What? Greatly for the people spoke of stoning him. Don't you hate it when that happens? That's different than getting stoned with him. This is stoning him. Stoning him. And because the soul of the people was so grieved. And every man, his sons and his daughters. But David, check this out. Really pay attention to this. David strengthened himself in the Lord. David strengthened himself in the Lord. I'm going to say it one more time. David strengthened himself in the Lord. Now, it's one thing to be excited about what's going on in, you know, through a, a motivational speaker, you know, here in Palm Beach, Tony Robbins, personal power guy, he lives here. But there's certain times in your life, and I'm not against motivational speakers, but there's certain times that you, you can't just get a motivational speaker to get you out of greatly distress. David needed to strengthen himself, not with a YouTube, not with a podcast. He said he strengthened himself in the Lord. Yeah. There's some things that a motivational speaker can't do to you. You need the anointing, the yoke-destroying power of the Holy Ghost to come in and break the power of the devil, but you got to do it by yourself. Somebody ought to say amen. you got to do it by yourself. And, and, and so he strengthened himself when he was in adversity. Now, there are times in life where you cycle. There are cycles and seasons. In St. Louis, they're in a winter season, and that would be why I'm down here with y'all. <laughs> They're in a season of cold. They're in a season of snow. But spring is on the way. Thank God for spring being on the way for those people. Aren't you glad that those people 1,100 miles tonight got warmth? Holy Ghost, bless them. But they're in a season. There's winter, spring, summer, and fall. There are seasons. They're just periods of time. And you might be in a season tonight here at Sunset Hills, Weldon, around the world, and you're in a season of discouragement. And so what do you do in a time of discouragement? You've got two options. One, you can agree with the devil and the demonic people in your life who have said, you're never going to make it. I told you you wasn't going to make it. I told you there's no way that's just going to turn around for you. And you got to say no to them and yes to him and say, I'm going to keep myself. Come on. And that's what he said. I know the Lord has kept me. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. I know the Lord has kept me. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, I might not have no money. And my daughter's sick too. But thank God I ain't ugly like you. I know the Lord has kept me. Yes, he will. Okay. See, yeah. Have you ever thought about some people that left your life, you had a flashback, and you just whispered, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Come on, somebody. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. So, so sometimes what is happening in your life is the enemy is trying to maintain an attack on you to hit you in that same spot to get you to give up. But God said, no, David strengthened himself in the Lord. In the Lord. How do you do that? You get up and say, God, I might not feel healed, but I am healed. 
Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. It's not by mind, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And we say, God, I don't feel right. It doesn't look right. It doesn't smell right. But by faith, I say it is right. And I'm going to strengthen myself today, no matter what my checkbook says, no matter what my family says. Come on. No matter what the doctor says, I'm going to irritate the devil to say, encourage myself. Now, you got to realize that David comes back, and he comes back to his hometown, and they burn his house down. They burnt the whole town down. They stole all his stuff. They took his daughters, took his wives, took everybody, but they didn't kill him, and that's significant. If they would have killed him, you couldn't have recovered it. But I'm just telling you right now that God's going to recover stuff that you thought was over, but the devil tried to destroy it, but he couldn't destroy it. They're actually going to prove it for you. You're going to recover it, but you got to strengthen yourself. Verse 7 says, so then David said to Abathar, the priest of the Amalekite's son, bring me now the ephod here, important part. And he brought David the ephod. So David inquired of the Lord. I want you to shout that. He did what? He inquired of the Lord. So what do you do when you're in trouble? You inquire of the Lord. Not Dr. Phil, not Oprah. Who? You inquired of the Lord. And he said, Lord, shall I overtake them? It's important to know the will of God for your life. You might be climbing a, a, a ladder that you're not supposed to be climbing. You might be taking a hill that you're not supposed to. You might be fighting a battle that had, it wasn't yours. He said, shall I overtake them? And the Lord answered him and said, pursue. I want you to shout that, pursue. Pursue, pursue and you shall surely overtake them without fail. And I love this part. You shall recover it all. Everybody shout, recover it all. Recover it all. Shout it again, recover it all. Now, I, I looked up recover it all in the Hebrew right here, and it says to snatch back up, plunder, take back, deliver back your possessions, and recover everything that was stolen. So when it said recover all, it means snatch back. In other words, the devil took your health, you're like, I got to get that back. Devil took your car, I got to get that back. Devil took your job, I got to get that back. Somebody ought to help me right now. But you got to, but, but while you're down and you're defeated and the house burnt down and the kids are gone and the bills look bad and your elbow hurts and you, you say, oh, what am I going to do? When you start encouraging yourself in the Lord and you inquire of the Lord, the Lord will talk back to you and he'll say, pursue, baby. You go back and get that thing. Just because that guy left you, come on, doesn't mean the next guy isn't going to leave you. Somebody ought to say amen to this. But you got to wait on the Lord. And if you're a note taker, I want you to Twitter this. I want you to Instagram this. The only thing harder than waiting on God is wishing that you had. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings as eagles. So David's saying, hey, I, shall I overtake them? God said, yes, pursue them, and surely you will overcome and recover all. So David went with 600 men who were with him, and they came to the brook. And, and, and all of a sudden, they're at this brook. They're at this point to continue to pursue, and now 200 men stayed behind. They said, we're weary. So you got to figure this out. David's saying, hey, I'm encouraging myself in the Lord, which is not by might, it's not by power, it's by the Spirit of God. We're going back to Ziklag, and we're taking our stuff back. I'm going back. They took my saddle. They did. They took my show saddle. They took the, 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 all the bridles that we had. They had all the good stuff that we got, and they stole it. And we're going back. I'm going back to get my wife. I'm going to back to get everything. So now there's 600 guys, and they're on their horses. Come on, somebody. And they're on the horses. They're like, ta, 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 ta. maybe I could get a drum. So go, 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 go. And, and he's, he's depressed. And there, he said, guys, come on, come on, come on, guys, come on. Let's go, let's go. We can make it, we can make it, we can make it. And then they get to a brook. Check this out. They get to a brook, and now they get tired. Anybody ever knew that if you went home and laid down, you were screwed, you weren't getting back up? Come on, somebody. I can't go home if I sit down. Come on, somebody. Else, if I lay down, I ain't getting back up. I'll keep on going, keep on going. But I can't. So they got down. And this is where you got to be careful. There are moments in your life where David is saying, we're going to do it. We're going to cross this river. We're going to go back to Ziklag. We're going to get our stuff. And then they get almost there. They're halfway there. And then they get ready to cross the creek, as they say in Missouri. And they get ready to cross the creek. And they said, before we go over there, we're going to rest. And then now we get 200 dudes peel off. And they said, I'm tired. I can't make it. I'm walking bow-legged. I'm tired. I'm chapped. I'm hungry. I'm defeated. And David looked at them and said, I'm tired. I'm weary. 
I'm exhausted, but I'm not going to be moved by what I feel. I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord again, and i got to go back and get it. If it was easy to be rich, skinny, tan, and healthy, everybody do it. But any old fish can die, float downstream, but it takes a live one to say, you know what? I'm going to pursue. I'm going to pursue my dream. I'm going to pursue my education. I'm going to pursue my breakthrough. I'm going to pursue everything that the devil is trying to take from me, and I'm going to recover it all. Come on, I'll give you 10 seconds to praise God. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Somebody ought to praise. They're going crazy and saying, sit down. You guys are good. Now, now they peel off 200 guys because they were weary. I don't care to make it. I don't know what to do. Sometimes, now let's talk about that in a minute. Let's talk about pity parties. <laughs> Anybody ever had a pity party? Come on, raise your hand if you got a pity party. You know, a pity party is a, the lowest attended party of all parties. <laughs> it ain't nobody but you and the devil in a pity party. My husband doesn't treat me right. I don't like my my wife doesn't treat me right. Oh, God, I just can't believe she doesn't understand what kind of great husband I am. I clean and I cook. That's just so you don't get shot. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, just they need to appreciate me. Uh, and then some other dude's like, oh, God, if you'd ever bless me with a wife, God, he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from God. God, give me a wife. And this guy's like, God, I know I prayed that prayer, but would you take her, God? You just take her. She's insured, Lord. I got $2 million on this one right now so we get in a pity party you got to be careful when you're on a pity party because the devil will get in there I said the devil will get in there and he'll try to get you to not celebrate what you do have thinking about what you should have and another guy over here would love to have what you got but you're too busy complaining and remaining instead of praising and raising somebody ought to help me right now so you got to say I'm gonna encourage myself and you got to separate yourself from the 200 dudes that ain't going because ain't everybody gonna go I know it's horrible grammar but it's good theology I know it's going to kill all the educated people, but just say, ain't everybody going to go? And if you like me, it's everybody. Come on, try it again, everybody. Everybody ain't going to go. Come on, shout it again. All campuses, everybody ain't going to go. Because some people, it's not that they don't like you. Your spirit irritates their demons. Somebody ought to help me right now. So what God is getting ready to do in your life, you're like, God's about to do it. And they're like, don't you know that government is shut down? Don't you know that Donald Trump is trying to jack up the whole world? I say, don't you know about the kingdom of God? Don't you know that we're not here in this world on our own assignment? We're on a divine assignment by God, and he will meet all of our needs. Let the government shut down and let God take over. Let him bring health and provision and supernatural opportunity to somebody and they'll say, I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. I'm not staying here by the creek with 200 people. That's mine. Oh, come on. You can be seated. Don't you love being around the people of God? There's the energy. I feel sorry for the people just watching home online. There's so much energy in this place. Like any demon within 30 miles is like, uh, stay away from the Royal Palm Beach area. There is fire coming up out of the chapel, and it's going all over the world. Hell is freaking out tonight. <laughs> and I feel sorry for my Baptist father-in-law who is getting sprinkled tonight like crazy. The man done got a shower. I spit a lot. I like to keep it wet. Come on, somebody. I just spit a lot. So we got 200 guys that peeled off. Check this out. Now, in verse 17, let's jump to verse 17. Then David, he, he gets up with the people that he does have, doesn't gripe about the 200 guys that peeled off. Then David attacked them from twilight until evening the next day. That's a long day. And not a man escaped, except 400 young men who rode their camels and fled. And so check this out. Here's the end of, of this. So David recovered most of it. Uh, you guys got to read. David recovered some of it. 
David did what? He recovered what? All. Come on, St. Louis. David recovered what? All. He, he, God said, pursue, and you'll recover all. And then David pursued, and he recovered all. And all the Amalekites that were carried away. Then David rescued his two wives. Don't ask me why he's got two wives, because that's a whole other thing that they used to do back in the day that you shouldn't do anymore. Come on, somebody, because I, I have enough trouble taking care of one lady. You know what I'm talking about? It's like I can't, I don't even know how to deal with this one. How he dealt with two of these, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Get ready to preach on he said, she said. We'll get into that. So he recovered all, and, and, and his two wives, check this out, and, and nothing of theirs was lacking. This coincides with Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Come on, shout it. The Lord is my shepherd, I sh shall not lack. Come on, St. Louis, I can't hear you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Tell that to the devil. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. The devil is a liar. Turn to your neighbor and say, the devil's a liar, the devil's a liar, the devil's a liar. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Lacking nothing, small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything, which they had taken from them, and David recovered all. And then David took all the flocks. In other words, you got to picture this. He comes back, and there's all his stuff. And he's like, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. Those two girls over there, those are my wives. Those children over there, those are my kids right now. That's my baby right now, that's my baby mama right there, and that's my other baby mama, and he recovered it all. <laughs> then after he recovers it all, he takes all his stuff and said, nothing small or large. In other words, he said, that's my Apple Watch. <laughs> that's my flat screen. And then it says, then he went and recovered all of the animals. In other words, now he's recovering stuff that's not his. Because the enemy got so whipped and they got so defeated that they actually left running and they couldn't take their camels, they couldn't take their horses, they couldn't take their stuff. And that was the Bible saying the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. In other words, when the devil attacks you, he, God, will not allow him to destroy your stuff. And not only will you get your stuff back, you will get the stuff back that did not belong to you. Somebody ought to help me right now because the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Come on, somebody ought to help me. Yeah. So now he gets it all. Now, I really want to park here just for a moment. Earth City Campus, $21 million building that we got for $6.3 million. That's a whole bunch of millions that the devil lost. Yeah. We have people in our house. I was talking to a guy the other day a couple days ago, and they're buying a house, and the guy, this is a big house, a really nice house, but the guy who, before him, had lost a lot of money on the house, like loads and loads and loads and lots of money. And these godly people came in, and they get to reap all the money that the other person had invested because God is all about the wealth of the sinners laid up for the just or the righteous. Now, what's righteous? We break the word down right. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. It's not because of anything that we do, but it's because of us receiving the grace of God that he has done. And that's one of the things that encourages us. We can encourage ourselves in a pity party and say, I'm not going to do that because I am not what I did. I am what I do. What do I do? On a Tuesday night, I go to church. I'm 15 days into the brand new year. Somebody ought to help me. It's 15 days into this brand new year. I'm going to let the devil know that I'm coming back for my stuff. And you mean it. And you can do that in the spirit. I have a friend, and her name is Darlene Bishop. And, and Darlene Bishop is a phenomenal preacher and communicator. And her husband, who recently went on to be with the Lord, um, he was just an incredible uh, man, business guy. And he, he, he sold horses, like expensive horses, like million-dollar horses, the kind they sell out at Wellington. And um, there, was a, there was a stall guy that was stealing, somebody, a, a stall mate, a guy that was cleaning out the stalls. He was stealing from Lawrence Bishop, and Lawrence really didn't notice it at first because sometimes you've got so much stuff you don't notice that it's gone. But then he went and thought, where is that, that saddle I paid $5,000 for? Where's that $2,000 show bridle? He's looking, he's thinking, man, did I misplace that? And then the next thing he knows is he starts figuring out, man, this is just for real. And then he's praying in the morning, and the Holy Spirit speaks to him and tells him that it's one of those guys. He's been stealing his stuff. So he said, hey, Darlene, get in the truck. 
So she, he got in the truck with her, and they drove over to this guy's little trailer, and he had his own little barn, and he went into the barn without the guy knowing it. True story. And Lawrence Bishop walked into the barn, and he looked and said, that's my saddle. That's my bridle. That's my tax box. Tax box. He had all this stuff lined out that was his. And he's, you know, Darlene was in the truck. True story. Darlene is in the truck, and he comes out of that place mad. He throws his saddle in. He throws his bridle in. He goes again. He throws more saddles in, more bridles in. And eventually, the whole truck's loaded. He goes back, and he's putting stuff she said, Lawrence, Bishop, that can't possibly be all your stuff. And he said, I don't think all of it's my stuff, but I'm taking stuff that might be other people's stuff. Somebody ought to help me right now. He went back for his stuff. Everybody shout, I'm going back for my stuff. Shout it again, I'm going back for my stuff. You've got to go back for your stuff and recover it all because if you don't, the Bible says the thief comes to do what? To Again, what is it? He didn't come to bring you a Hallmark card. He didn't come to bring you coffee. He came to steal your stuff. But the Bible says this in 1 Peter 5, verse 8. I want you to go there, all campuses. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, notice it doesn't say he is, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Notice it says may devour. So I might tell you, may I take you to dinner? How many of y'all raise your hand? You say, you may. Raise your hand. May I take your car home? How many of y'all are like, no, I need my car. So you got to say, yes, you may. Yes, you may not. So it says the devil walks around seeking whom he may devour. Then it says, you know, in another translation says that he walks around like, like, a, like a lion. He's not a lion. Jesus knocked his teeth out 2,000 years ago. If he ever did get a hold of you, it would be like, I, 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 he kind of gunned me to death, but he hasn't got any teeth. Jesus said that he has given us authority and us power over principalities, over powers, over rulers of darkness, Ephesians 6 and 10. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against those principalities and powers. So actually the thing that God is going to do in your life is predicated on you stepping out in faith and saying, devil, I came to get my stuff. You're not going to steal my marriage. You're not going to steal my joy. You're not going to steal my children. You're not going to steal my health. You're not going to steal my mind. You're not going to steal my peace. Come on, somebody. You're not going to steal anything from me anymore. I'm only 15 days into a new year, but you may not take advantage of me. So it helps a lot when you find the thief. So when Lawrence found who the guy was, how many of y'all know that dude done lost his job that day? He can't be in the bar. He can't be nowhere near the bar. We had to file a priest report about him being near the bar, and then everybody knew that he was a thief. And that's the scripture I want to go to in Proverbs 6, verse 31. You guys look great too, by the way. Look behind you. Look at all those people in Sunset Hills. Look at that just packed out place. Just all those people. 2,400 seats in that building. Isn't that amazing? I see everybody there. I see Jalen on the front row. I see Pastor Phil. I see Rachel. I see the whole team. Give it up for St. Louis again. Unbelievable. They go to church. St. Louis goes to church on Tuesday night. How many of y'all glad you got a place to go on Tuesday night? This is gonna, this is gonna rock your world. Check this out. Here is the legal action you can take. Proverbs 631. But if, the, if he be found, the thief, if the thief be found, he shall restore sevenfold, and he shall give you all of his substance, of his house. In other words, not only do you get back when you find out who the thief is, all your stuff, it says that you get it back sevenfold, you get all his stuff. In other words, God said, hey, I'm not going to let him steal your marriage. I'm not going to let him steal your money. He told that to David. I'm not going to let him steal your wives. They might have taken this stuff away from you, but I told the devil, no, you can't touch them. No, you can't kill them. And some of you, I prophesy to you that you're worried about your adult kids. Let me tell you something. The devil might have stole them for a minute, but the Bible said that if you're teaching children in the way that they should go, when they're old, they'll not depart. Somebody ought to help me. So they might, it might be a while before they come back, but you say, you're not stealing my son. You're not stealing my daughter. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I'm getting my grandkids back. I'm getting my marriage back. You're on that horse. Come on, give me that. You're on that horse. I'm riding, 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 riding. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I know it's crazy. It's Tuesday. Can you imagine this on YouTube? I wish I'd have bought me one of those little horses. Who's gonna ride with me? Coming back, going to get my stuff. Going to get my stuff. Going to get my car. Going to get my. Yeah! All right. 
<laughs> Only on a Tuesday. I won't do that on a Sunday. That's a wild horse, man. That horse is rough. That horse wasn't gated either. You know, I gate a horse smooth. That horse is a quarter horse. I almost died one time on a quarter horse. <laughs> Fell off of it. Foot got caught in the stirrup. It's dragging me. Nicole came over and unplugged it right outside of Walmart. <laughs> That's a quarter horse. That's it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh. I had to get him laughing to get my breath back. That horse, I'm running that horse. <sighs> Proverbs, let's look at it again, 631. But if he be found, I got to give you a minute. If he be found, how many, I, I, he got to pay it back how many times? Seven how many times? Seven how many times? Seven, mm-hmm. Seven times. So that kind of knowledge gives you power. When you get knowledge, it changes everything. That's why the Bible said, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. My people perish for a lack of what? Knowledge. You're on a Tuesday night, you're getting information, you're getting knowledge, you're getting power, and you're letting the devil know, devil, no, not today. No, 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 because I know who I am. You get it back. Because it's one thing to have money. And it's one thing to have peace and money. But if I had to pick between money or peace, I'd always pick peace. Good news is, the Bible said that with blessing comes persecution. So there is trials, but it said that uh, the, 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 the blessing of the upright was a peaceful thing. So I, I want you to just go with the mindset in the first 15 days of the brand new year to say, hang on a minute. The devil's already trying the same junk and funk on me that he did last year. And you know what? I might have already fallen off the wagon, fallen off the horse. I might have already, you know, stopped the diet or I might have done this. You got to pick yourself back up and say, no, 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 no. The devil's not going to steal. I'm no longer going to let him steal any more of my stuff because God said, I can recover it all. Not some of it, but what? All of it. Not part of it, but what? So all of it. Everybody shout, I'm going to recover it all. Recover shout it again. I'm going to recover it all. Recover now, let, let's talk about this for one more minute before we go. When you decide that you're going to be serious about this thing called, I'm going to fast 21 days on the Daniel fast, or you're going to say, I'm not eating. I'm on a partial fast, which means, you know, maybe from 6 o'clock at night, you don't eat until the next day at noon. Whatever it is. Everybody's on a different fast. I've been on mine for 15 days. And, uh, but, but everybody should, this time of year, be recalibrating, saying, hey, I want to be near to you. When you're near to God, remember at the beginning of the passage, it said, David inquired of the Lord. The difference maker in your life oftentimes is not money. It's not association with people. It's association with God. And so God will actually put you around him, and he'll start speaking to your spirit, and it'll encourage you, and you can have peace even though the government might be shut down, even though your paycheck might not look like it's working out, even though it might not look like right now you're physically as good as you want to be. What you do is you begin to recalibrate your mind and say, I'm taking my mind back First, because Joyce Meyer always says, where the mind goes, the man follows. Shout out with me. Where the mind goes, the man follows. So if you start thinking negative thoughts, you will draw negativity into your life. And that's what happened with the 200 guys that got stuck at the creek. Now, the beauty of this passage is, if you continue to read, we're almost done, verse 21. Now, David came back to the 200 men who had been so weary that they could not follow David. And so now he says, hey, I'm actually coming back to you. And he met them where they were. And David came near to them and he greeted them. Then all of the wicked, worthless men who, who went because they did not go with us, the, the men of the tribe are saying, you're, what are you going to do? You're not going to share it with them. And he says, yes, we are going to give them parts of the spoil that we recovered. In other words, when he came back, even though those guys at this side of the mountain or this side of the creek did not cross over, they brought back those guys' wives. 
They could have kept them as slaves. They brought back their, their you know, plows. They brought back their donkeys. They brought back their goats. In other words, what we have to make sure we're doing is we're not so self-exhorted when we recover ours to say, this is mine. I deserve this. We have something in our hand to do something that is on God's heart. Somebody ought to help me right now. So when God blesses you, don't sit there and go, if you had a job, if you would have, you should have, you could have. It should be a heart of compassion to say, people that are hungry, we feed them. People who don't have clothes, we clothe them. People that are in prison, we visit them. Somebody ought to help me right now. I'm talking about when you recover something, giving it back. And this is where it comes in where... Uh, God said that of David. He said, David is a man after my own heart. And I used to think, God, what part of David did you like? That adultery part where he was like, you know, seeing Bathsheba taking a bath, watching pornography, brings her over, she gets pregnant. Did you like that part? Or did you like the fact that he tried to cover it up and kill the guy, you know, her husband? No, it wasn't that God was, uh, his heart was perfect. He said, he, God spoke to me one time and said, David, the part that I love about David, he, he was after my heart. He was after God. In other words, he wasn't right on the outside, but his heart was right. And so this is the beauty of us here at Faith Church today and all our campuses. You might not be right. You might not feel right. But if your heart is right towards God, you're coming to church on a Tuesday night. You're going through growth track. You're in a small group. Welland Springs is watching online. If you're in this community of believers, what you're doing is you're after God. And when you're after God, God speaks into your ear and says, pursue by our city. Pursue. Let's take over Ferguson Florissant campus on the 27th. Somebody ought to help me right now. He told us to pursue Palm Beach County, and we went to a high school where we didn't know anybody, and we started a church, and then God gave us this incredible studio and chapel here free of charge. Somebody ought to say amen. Somebody bought it for us. I'm preaching tonight on the stage where we just kept going. And I'm here to tell you, I was tired a lot of times, and I've cried a lot of times and thought, could I do it? I've been on stage before and thought, I'm losing it right now. Can I make it through this sermon? I just feel so bad, and I'm just losing my mind, but I just kept going and going. And by the end of the service, I preached myself happy, and the devil left me alone. Come on, somebody ought to help me. It's not easy. But you know, here, oh, I want you to hear this. I, I don't want you to be the person sitting at the creek, though, right. crying. Because, you know, it's really cool to have the story. Those other guys all came back. Do, 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 do. Honey, I got my wife, you know. He's like, you got all these guys that are like buffed up, ripped up, tough guys. And they go recover everybody. And they're like, where's my husband? Well, he's back at the campfire. <laughs> How many of y'all know you bring your wife back? She like, boy. You couldn't cross that creek for me. Come on, somebody ought to help me right now. What happens? Uh, <laughs> I'll catch a grenade for you. I'll step on a blade for you. Huh? Huh? You were singing, my girl. No, no, no. Ain't about that. You, but what I'm saying is, is that be a man of God. Be a woman of God. And pull yourself up by your bootstraps again and say, I'm going to recover it back. I'm not going to sit at the creek and cry. I'm going to overcome. This stroke isn't taking me down. Come on, somebody. This blurred vision isn't taking me out. This knee replacement isn't going to stop me. You can't stop a man or a woman of God who says, God said, pursue, I will pursue. Sue, somebody ought to praise God for about 10 seconds. Hey! Oh! You remember this song? Oh, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what is stole from me. Help me, Titus. I took back what is stole from me. Come on, all campuses stand. Took back, took back what is stole from me. Sit out. Took back what he stole from me. Where's he at? He's under my feet in this pit. He's under my feet. 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 Satan is under my feet. Come on, sing it, say it. Well, I went to the enemy's camp. Not fast. And I took back what he stole He's under my feet. 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 He's
He's under my feet. 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 He's under my
that you could have got it back. But do you want it back? I said, what in the world would I do with it? Because we were getting ready to, you know, think about envisioning. And I saw in my heart that someday we would move and be in Florida, you know, 50% of the time preaching. As you guys know, I live, we live a week here. This is our week here. And Saturday, Nicole flies back to St. Louis Saturday night to preach. And, and I stay here. And Sunday, I fly to St. Louis. And I'll be with you guys all week. And then Sunday, I'll preach there. And Saturday. So our life wouldn't even fit to have horses and barns and all that. If I want somebody's horses, how many of y'all know we, we got plenty of people around that there's horsing around, we can go play with their horses. And as you now know, one of my favorite horses is the quarter horse at Walmart. You know my story now, but, but my point was this. The very thing that you think you could never get back, you might be able to get that back, but what God gives you back is so much better than what you thought you would want back. Somebody ought to say amen. You might not want that man back. You might not want that. Somebody ought to help me right now. God's going to give you a double for your trouble. Somebody ought to help me. I prophesy to you that 19 and 2020 is a year of supernatural provision, a God opportunity. But you can't sit down crying at a pity party. you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Say, God, I love you. I go to church when I don't feel like it. I serve you when I don't want to. I do what's right because it's right and I do it right. Now I won't grow weary in well-doing. I will reap if I faint not. Come on, somebody ought to praise God if you agree with that right now. Woo! I love Tuesday nights. I was always so sad for like about two years. We didn't have Tuesday nights down here. So every other Tuesday night, I have nothing to do. And I would sit looking at the screen at live stream in St. Louis and miss you all, and I do. But I didn't miss you so bad that I needed to go back in that weather. Come on, somebody, I miss you, but I miss you. I didn't mean it. Yes, I did. No, obviously, I'm joking. It's not about weather, but it does help. It's like Nicole, it, it, it wasn't about looks, but how many of y'all know? You know, beauty's only, you know, so deep. But how many of y'all know ugly to the bone? It's just to the bone. But, but when I was there, God began to speak to me. As he said, hey, I want you, David, to go to the little ministry center that we had. And it was a little building. And I, I preached. Some of you were there. How many of y'all there at the little ministry center? And I, I would preach on the desk, like the Formica counter there. And I would preach to the 20 people who were there. And one day I woke up with a word from the Lord. Notice I inquired of the Lord right here in West Palm. And God said... It's time to move the offices. I told Nicole, it's time to move the offices. She said, no, that's expensive, don't do it. But how many of y'all know, Nicole makes good sense, but a lot of times God tells you stuff that doesn't make sense at all. So what she was saying technically was right, but technically was wrong. So I found a little set of keys as I was looking at a piece of property about 35 minutes away from here. And it said Royal Palm Beach on it. And it said Royal Palm Beach Way, which is that street out in front of you. Didn't mean anything at the time, but. It, the Holy Spirit led me on a Sunday morning to stand up and say, hey, we're going to have a, not the keys or anything. I just said, we're going to have a building that seats 100, 120 people in offices. And some guy was there that day. He's here tonight. And he said, I, I actually happen to own a building. It's a church and it's got a room that seats about 100 and, well, tonight, 30 and about 100 over there. Would you want it if I gave it to you and I fixed it up and made it brand new? And we got a new church van. Would you want that? And I said, you bring that church van tomorrow. Come on, somebody. You bring that tomorrow. We can't take the building tomorrow, but we take the van tomorrow. Van sitting out back. I'm here to tell you that when you start obeying God, God starts where God guides. He provides. Shout it with me. Where God? Come on, shout it again. Where God? So if you're on your own trail, no provision. You're on God's trail because you inquired for the Lord. You're in a small group with sound, you know, pastoral people telling you, that's a dumb idea. That's a good idea. Then God will bless you. As we go, I, I, I want to pray for you. Every head bowed and every eye closed, both here and in St. Louis. I can see you right now, St. Louis, on the screen. I see each and every one of you. I see the guy that gave me the tennis shoes the other night, Dom. I see, I, I, I see you there. Raise your hands if you say, Pastor, tonight I needed that message. It stirred my spirit. Raise your hand wherever you are. Raise your hand. I need to see it. Let God see it. It welded online. You can put it down. I want to pray for you right now. I want you to mix your faith with my faith. As I pray this prayer, and I want you to pray it, repeat it with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I received this word tonight. Live stream from Florida. I receive it right now. It is mine. This is my banner year. 19, 2020. In 2020, I will see 2020 vision 
with great clarity every prayer that I have prayed it will be answered in the banner year of 19 in 2020 in Jesus name and everybody said amen and amen give the Lord a hand come on somebody amen amen